It's the old adage that a movie hero is only ever as good as their villains. After all, would Batman be as popular as he is without the Joker? Would John McClane be anything without Hans Gruber? And who would David Dunn even be without Mr. Glass? Of course, creating a truly good villain is easier said than done, and as such, a lot of movie villains come to be defined by surprising plot twists and character reveals that nobody saw coming. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 8 movie villain reveals that were genuinely surprising. Number 8, Tom, the girl on the train. Made to ride the renewed hype and mystery thrillers kicked off by Gone Girl, the girl on the train wasn't all that great, but it did have one exceptional twist. Throughout the movie, Emily Blunt's Rachel is trying to figure out whether or not she's responsible for killing a missing woman, as she was the last person to see her alive, but can't remember her actions thanks to her wicked drinking problem. Now, yeah, you know it's probably not going to be her who's actually responsible, but you never expect that it would be her seemingly supportive husband. And that's because all the way through we're shown how Rachel's drinking is tearing their marriage apart, with her constantly getting into fights with her husband and even interfering with his career. However, it turns out that all of these scenes weren't actually real, and he was just using her drunken blackouts as an excuse to fabricate lies about what she actually got up to, gaslighting her while getting away with his own abuse. Now maybe it's because actor Justin Theroux is just so damn charming, or maybe because the movie itself plays every trick in the book to blind you from the truth, but you never expect him to be involved in the murder, never mind be the manipulative horrible husband that he actually is behind closed doors. Number 7, The Mandarin, Iron Man 3. Perhaps the most controversial twist to ever feature in a superhero movie, the reveal that Iron Man 3's Mandarin wasn't actually the film's main villain, and not even a villain at all, but rather a cockney actor hired to take the focus away from the real bad guy, caught everybody off guard. It's one of the few times the MCU got properly nuts with its stories, being so out of left field that it took everyone a minute to realise just what the hell was happening. When they did realise that the reveal wasn't actually a joke, Joke and it became clear that one of Iron Man's most iconic enemies was essentially reduced to a gag, both Marvel and director Shane Black received a huge, and in my opinion, totally undeserved, backlash. While Guy Pearce's Aldrich Killian still made for a great supervillain to go toe to toe with Tony Stark, a lot of viewers simply couldn't get over the fact that Marvel put this big twist in their latest tentpole release. Number 6, Scrappy Doo, Scooby Doo. Say what you will about the live action Scooby Doo movies, but the original, written oddly enough by James Gunn, at least has one ingenious trick up its sleeve. Because it turned out that while the monsters in the movie were indeed real, the Mystery Inc. team were intentionally brought to the haunted island, literally called Spooky Island by the way, by somebody else. In a first twist, it turns out that the owner of the resort, Mondavarius, is actually the leader of the demons, using them to steal the souls of visitors. However, it's then revealed that Mondavarius isn't a person at all, but rather a robotic shell controlled by none other than former Mystery Inc. nightmare dog, Scrappy Doo. Making Scrappy the villain of the movie and giving him enough of a backstory to make the twist work was a stroke of genius. Everyone assumed that he was just a quick, funny cameo, and nobody expected him to be the one running the show. Sure. Number 5, Brahms, the boy. Okay, so this is a bit of a different kettle of fish for this list. See, The Boy is a horror movie quite literally designed to ride the wave of the Annabelle hype, looking just like your regular old possessed doll flick. The only difference here is that the Raggedy Ann inspired Doll of the Conjuring spin-off had been traded in for a creepy school prefect looking doll demon. And while most of The Boy plays out exactly how you'd expect it to, with the doll assumedly moving on its own and being a cursed item that brings down the family that's recently acquired him, the end does throw a mighty twist that changes the focus of the film entirely. That's because it turns out the doll isn't possessed at all, but rather that there's been a boy living in the walls of the house the whole time who has been terrorising the family. So yeah, this little piece of porcelain wasn't to blame, but this wall-dwelling freak was. It's a shame that the sequel would change this narrative entirely by saying that actually the doll was possessed all along, but for this movie, this was a genuinely surprising twist. Number 4. Ernesto Coco. If you're watching a Disney Pixar movie, there's a good chance that the villain established at the start won't be the main antagonist by the end. The same can be said for Coco, which initially doesn't look like it has a clearly defined villain at all. There's only really the slippery Hector, who acts as a spirit guide for main character Miguel in his quest to find his great-grandfather Ernesto, who was a musical phenomenon in both life and death. 
However, it's revealed later that while he is beloved, Ernesto didn't actually deserve any of his fame, as it was Hector who wrote his biggest hits and didn't get any credit for it. When he threatened to leave and reveal the truth about the stolen songs, Ernesto actually killed his former friend and broke big on his own. The twist is great because not only does it give the movie a great villain in its later stages, but it also awards it with a suitably fascinating hero, as Hector becomes more than just a lovable rogue, but an utterly tragic protagonist. Number 3. Ryan, Promising Young Woman Promising Young Woman is chock full of awful, awful dudes who scrape the bottom of the barrel and torment the film's hero Cassie. However, Ryan, played by Bo Burnham, is supposed to be different. After the sexual assault and suicide of her best friend, Cassie has become an emotional shut-in, only motivated by her desire to deal a little bit of justice to sleazy dudes at bars and clubs who prey on vulnerable women. Her main target is Al, the man responsible for sexually assaulting her friend, an act he also recorded on his phone. Ryan, on the other hand, gets her to open up though, and the two start what is seemingly a positive relationship. He's kind, patient, and even sings Paris Hilton to her in a store when it comes on over the radio. In short, it seems like he's the perfect boyfriend and an anchor to the real world that could stop Cassie's self-destructive behaviour. Which makes it all the more heartbreaking when it's revealed that he's just another wrong'un. Just as Cassie is about to move on, she receives the video from her friend's assault, and who does she see in it, watching the events unfold and doing nothing other than joking about it? Well, it's Ryan. It's a gut punch of a twist and a great bit of casting to hide it. I mean, after all, we'd never think bad of Bo Burnham, would we? Number 2. The Vulture Spider-Man Homecoming Although the MCU might have had a villain problem at one point in time, the Vulture very much broke that pattern. Michael Keaton's portrayal brought a surprising amount of humanity to the character, giving a bit of depth to a villain who could have easily been seen as a simple criminal. However, in a surprising twist, the film also gave viewers a glimpse of the Vulture's home life. That's because just before the third act kicks into gear, Peter Parker is ready to take his date to the homecoming ball where the title gets its name, nervously ringing her doorbell and then being greeted by none other than his greatest enemy so far, who turns out to be his date's father. Not only is the twist perfectly executed and the subsequent super powerless confrontation between the two characters one of the best sequences in the film, but it proved just why Spider-Man stories are so great. They excel when Peter's home life conflicts with that of his alter ego, as well as the way they reflect real teenage issues which don't get much bigger than the father of the girl you're trying to date quite literally being hell-bent on killing you. Number 1. Rose Get Out Although there's clearly something amiss during Get Out's narrative, the one seeming constant is the central relationship between Chris and Rose. While Rose's white family's reaction to Chris gives way to a full-blown conspiracy later on in the movie, she always seems like the normal one, aware of what her boyfriend must be feeling and open-minded about what might be going on. However, just when the two look like they're about to escape, it's revealed that Rose is actually probably worse than any of her family. Rather than being an unknowing party, the character has actually been luring black men to the house for years, using her affection to manipulate them into becoming victims. The twist feels like you've been personally fooled by her when it finally comes, and it truly isolates Chris, accentuating the horror even more. Realising the connection these two lovers had was a whole lie, and having to watch them then try to kill each other made Get Out's third act one of the most memorable in horror history. So that's our list, I want to see what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you see any of these villain turns coming, and are there any interesting ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't thought I've been Josh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.